I attended an event as a speaker and after my session, someone walked up to me and asked me how he could bring in his front-end development skills into Web3. And I feel like that is a beautiful question and a lot of people would probably want to know how because I actually started my tech career as a front-end developer and currently I work as a blockchain developer developer advocate so in this video i'm going to be showing you how you can actually do that so if you are a front-end developer or you intend to be a front-end developer then this video is probably the guide that you need okay. hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is louis praise emmanuel where have you been where have you been if you're just seeing my face for the very first time time in this video i'm going to be talking about how you can transit into web3 as a front-end developer but before i get started if you are not already subscribed to this channel what have i done to you i'm about to sing for you right now what is it mm, mm, haven't you done it now mm, mm. i said what is it mm, mm, haven't mm. you done it now please Subscribe to this channel so that I'm encouraged to keep doing more videos. And then please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends just so that um, they learn from it as well. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So who is a front-end developer? A front-end developer is a developer that is responsible for implementing the user interface of a website or application what they do basically is after the designer has designed the way that the website is supposed to look or the application is supposed to look they convert that design into code and make it um, live so that everybody can actually go to the url www.something.com and scroll through the website and enjoy the interface so that is actually what a front-end developer does now they use several technology to achieve this from um, html css javascript and then for more dynamic websites they use react vue.js angular.js and of course several other libraries and sdks that um, make the websites or applications more functional so let's talk about the difference between a traditional front-end developer and a web3 front-end developer now a front-end developer in a traditional sense build applications that interact with centralized servers and database while a web3 front-end developer builds dApps it is now decentralized applications not just applications that interact with blockchain technology in some roles in some companies they also are the ones responsible for integrating their front end with wallet connectors smart contracts so they read and write from smart contracts but now that is depending on the company that they will be working with but yeah that is the main difference between a web 2 front-end developer and a web 3 front-end developer to give you some insight about how these two worlds work in a traditional web 2 application the front-end developer uses like apis to fetch or send data to the database while in the web 3 end of things the developer actually reads or writes data to a smart contract now in the web 3 side of things the smart contract is usually the back end so you see the first one is talking to servers the second one is talking to smart contracts that are being stored on a blockchain another difference is when it comes to like the login process in a traditional web 2 application the login process is usually oh you fill some forms like sign in sign up and then those informations are being sent or verified against the database but on the web 3 side of things some of them might actually have the sign in and sign up processes but then there's something extra which is a wallet now most web3 applications need a wallet like you're supposed to use your wallet to communicate with the blockchain so front-end developers in web3 need to know how to connect their front-end application to wallets depending on the blockchain that they are going to be building on i hope this is clear enough let's talk about how you can transition from being a traditional front-end developer to becoming a web3 front-end developer now the very first thing to do is to hone your front-end skills now a lot of people think that when it comes to web3 they are literally like 
learning new stuff only and all the things they know are now invalid. No, if your front end skills are not tight, like if you're not very good as a front end developer, I suggest that you take some time off to actually build and solidify your skills because you need it. You would actually need it. So learn your JavaScript, learn your TypeScript, learn your JavaScript frameworks like React or maybe Vue.js or maybe Angular, depending on where or the kind of roles and companies you're looking to work at. Learn how to interact with APIs. You're going to need these things. You're going to need them. So please, I want you to master your front end skills. I'm not saying you should be perfect and you should know how to do everything, but please, you should be able to do the basics. So if they ask you, build a website you should be able to build a website without blinking the second thing you need to know is learn about blockchain technology and web3 in general you don't need to know everything but just know the basics how does a blockchain work how does a smart contract work how do they interact with each other what are nodes in web3 just learn the basics of um, blockchain technology and web3 in general so that when you start using the libraries and sdks they are going to actually be familiar to you you're not just going to be surprised and googling a lot of things ensure that you know the basics the next thing for you to know is to learn how to interact with the blockchain from your dap now when i say dap i'm talking about decentralized application those are just your front end that is going to be interacting with the blockchain so when i say dap that's what i mean so now you need to know how to connect your website like the front end that you have built to the blockchain and i'm going to break this down into different um categories the first one is learn about wallet connectors so wallets are actually very important when it comes to that development if you don't know what a wallet is i have a video on this channel i explained wallets to this like abc very easy to understand so go go back and watch that video but then you need to learn about wallet connectors so a wallet connector is a tool that allows your dap to interact with blockchain wallets now depending on the blockchain that you'll be building on there are several wallets that are already existing so you just need to learn how to integrate those wallets into your dApps. there are several tools that exist to make this easy for you some of them are ethers.js web3.js Rainbow Kit, Family.co, also known as Connect Kit, Wagme. So these are some of the very popular ones that exist, but learn how to use one or two of them, get familiar with it, and build some stuff with it just to get more familiar with it, okay? So yeah, the first one, learn how to use wallet connectors. After you've mastered that, the next thing for you to know is how to interact with an ABI. An ABI is a JSON file that shows you the different methods and functions that exist in a smart contract. Now, this is actually very important because if you're going to be interacting with smart contracts, you want to be able to know the functions that you're going to be interacting with. So learn how to use ABIs. When you're going to be working with a smart contract developer, that is the backend developer, they are going to send you the ABI. And now with that ABI, you'll be able to now integrate it into your DAP. So just get familiar with it, learn about it, learn how to use it. It's very important. One thing that will be useful to you is to learn how to interact with a smart contract, even if you are not giving an ABI. So some smart contract developers may not necessarily give you an ABI, but there are several ways that you can go about it. Using tools like ETHS.js or F3.js, you should still be able to interact with a smart contract. So please learn how to do that. Learn how to read and write from a smart contract using any of those SDKs is actually very important and it's going to help you a lot in the future. The next thing you need to know is to learn about decentralized database. In Web3, we don't use the regular MySQL, SQL that is being used in Web2. We use decentralized database to store information. So things like pictures, music, files generally, media files, you can actually store them in these decentralized databases. Some of the most popular ones are IPFS, Pinata, learn how to use them, learn how to integrate them in your application. Now, this decentralized database will usually give you a CID and you're able to like put it in your DAP and you're able to get that particular data when you need it. So just learn how to use decentralized databases like IPFS and Pinata. Another important thing you need to learn as a front-end developer in Web3 is how to query data. Now, um, using 
the graph. The graph is just like GraphQL. Now, the graph allows you to query like specific data that you need into your application. So just learn how to use it. Go and search it, the graph, learn how to um, fetch data from it, learn how to post data to it, learn how to create subgraphs. It's going to save you a lot of headache in the future. And it's actually very easy. So yeah, that should help. So these things I just mentioned are the basics. You just need to know these ones. You, you, you can't do without them. You're going to use them one way or the other, provided that you are a Web3 front-end developer. But then there are some other things that are good to know, and I'm just going to list them out. Number one is testing frameworks. So as a front-end developer, you should know how to write tests. Um, a lot of them exist also in Web3. Just find out what they are. I think just can be used, and so many of them, just find them and use them. You should be able to write tests for the things that you are building. The next one is security. Now you want to be sure that the functions and the methods that you're using in a smart contract are secure. It's actually advisable that you learn the basics about smart contract security. Just to be sure that you're not creating pitfalls in your application so that hackers will not be able to hack people's accounts through your application. So learning smart contract security or a bit of security in general is actually very helpful and important. The last one I'm going to be talking about is cross-chain development. Now, it is actually very good for you to be able to build on a particular blockchain, but some of the blockchain applications that you're going to be building are usually like cross-chain or multi-chain. So that means that you're going to be talking to several blockchains at once or several blockchains at different points in time in your application. So if you can, learn how to make it work. Learn how to use several cross-chain development tools. There are a lot of them. You just have to do with them. And it's going to make you stand out from the people that already have those skills. So there you have it. With all of those things in your arsenal, you're good to go as a web 3 front-end developer. I'm sure that any project that is given to you to build or to implement is going to be very easy for you. And then you would also be able to like integrate um, smart contracts easily. You're not just going to be a front-end developer. You can also be called a web 3 integration engineer or a web 3 front-end integration engineer. So you're going to know a lot if you actually learn how to do all of these things that I've mentioned in this video. So some things that I'm going to share with you while learning, please, these ones are very important. Number one is stay curious. Technology is fast evolving. Technology in general is fast evolving. So you have to stay curious. It is very possible that um, some of the things you're seeing in documentation are not working as they should because they just made some changes. Stay curious. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask people that have gone ahead of you. Ask um, the team members of that particular project that you're trying to use. They're going to answer you. Check Reddit, check um, Stack Overflow, check the Discord channels, ask questions. Just ensure that you're curious and that you're learning as much as you can so that you just stay updated with the latest trends. Stay updated with what is happening. Not necessarily know everything that is happening, but just be aware that, okay, these things are changing, these things are happening. The next one is to network. You don't want to do this alone. You want to have other people that are also on the same journey as you. So if you are a front-end developer, you could also network with people that are also like designers, product managers, back-end developers. Just network, ensure that you know different people that are in the space as you. It's going to help you. You could work together um, to build projects. You could work together in hackathons. You could work together when trying to find like a job or something. Just have people around you, build your network so that when you're stuck, you know who to go to to ask questions. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is build as you learn. A lot of people have this habit of learning, 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 and they don't build. So you have watched seven tutorial videos on YouTube. You have done um, about 10 projects that never saw the day of light. Like they never got completed. That's not the way to move. You actually have to build and implement all that you have learned. That is how you can actually say that you know this thing. If you go to a job interview and you tell them that I'm a front-end developer, they will say, okay, show me what you have done. You want to be able to say, okay, this is what I built. I built this NFT marketplace. I built this decentralized social media application. Show them projects. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You could just pick a project and try to do the Web3 equivalent, but just ensure that you have things that are interesting that people can use to know that, oh yes, you know this thing, it's going to help you. And another additional tip that I'm going to tell you is to talk about what to do. 
you don't just want to know how to do this thing you want to let people know that you know how to do it so that when there are opportunities when there are jobs and all of those things you're going to be the first person that they will think of to tell okay so do all of these things and i wish you all the best in your career i really hope this video helped if it did then do well to drop it in the comment section so i'll know that this video was actually useful to someone and of course you can send me a dm on twitter if you have any questions um yeah thank you so much for watching do well to subscribe yes please subscribe if you are not already subscribed share this video like this video and i'll see you in the next one bye